Hey, Juan here. Today we are going to talk about what has been my journey in discovering data and how can you apply data in your daily job. Nowadays, you can see many companies talking about data, how they use the data and the information that they have available in, for themselves. And it is very important to be able to understand how to use data, how you can start from the very beginning where you're looking into what are your sources of information, but all the way to how are you going to do applications for that information that you have available. Low hanging fruits, you could start thinking about how to discover some initial analytics. How could you build customer personas? How can you understand how your product fits different customer personas? And in the future, how can you even grow into things like machine learning or artificial intelligence, where you can actually start using uh, that data that you have available to train your products to do, for example, better recommendations to your customers. Let's do this! So why do you want to use data within your company? You want to use data because you want to create the biggest impact possible for your business. I would like to start talking about this uh, data science hierarchy of needs. I don't want to go into the details now into what this data science uh, hierarchy of needs is in practice. Uh, there's a very good article that I will link there to, for you to take a look. But I would like to tell that basically what it is, it's meaning is that you have to build your data uh, from the bottom up. So everybody talks about the fancy parts of uh, artificial intelligence, uh, about machine learning, but in reality those are in the very top of the pyramid. You want to start from the very bottom where you are able to collect reliable data reliably, where you are able to gather the data from different sources into one pool, where you can start working in your first analytics, for example metrics, where you might be able to start creating different segmentations. And then you can move forward with a simple machine learning algorithms or for example A-B testing. And then then all the way to the top where you are thinking more about machine learning and artificial intelligence. These again are in the very top, but of course there is a lot of gains in this journey for you as a company where you can already start understanding your customers better even before you are able to implement any kind of uh, machine learning into your products. So I want to clarify at first that I don't have a real background in data science other than my education in engineering and uh, I'm by no means a data engineer expert. So I just want to put that one out there so you are aware of that. And obviously I have worked with a team and different people in the company to build all this infrastructure. But the first approach, what I wanted to do, it was uh, how to find out, try to create a map or a grid where we describe what are all the data sources that you have in the company. So first of all, you want to look into where are the places where you are storing data. So you typically will have something like a CRM where you're storing information about your potential sales or leads or your uh, support cases. Typically, you might have something like an accounting tool where you do financial reporting. Then you might have something to track the usage of your product. This is typically something that happens with tech products uh, where you can see how the users engage uh, with the tools. And this is not because you care about how a specific user engages with the tool, but more understanding how people are actually using your products. As well, you might have something like a license management tool where you can see uh, if you have licenses or entitlements, how these are assigned to the users and how often are they used. So if you have a subscription, you can see if people are actually using uh, the subscriptions that they are provided. Just think about Netflix, you might be having a subscription, but you are paying for a subscription that you might not be using, then you might think if this person is at risk of leaving your uh, product. Then you finally will have something like a company website. So typically Google Analytics can help you there to understand what's the traffic on the website, where is the traffic coming from. And then you finally have something like a social media uh, analytics where you could see that if I am doing marketing campaigns in Twitter, how much are those uh, succeeding for my company or my products. So once we understood that we have all these different uh, sources of information, then we wanted to see how we could actually create a dashboard that would let us know uh, how the company is doing. This is easier said than done. In reality, it's not so easy to pull all this information into G 
just one main dashboard. Sometimes the different sources of information don't connect very well or as well as you expected. And uh, the information might be uh, not clean enough. So there's going to be a lot of pre-processing, mapping of the data and being able to actually clean it up so it can be shown in some kind of dashboard. At this point, we didn't want to overcomplicate the dashboard that we were creating, so we just tried to stick to sales figures. So, for example, how many licenses of the product were sold and how much revenue these licenses were generating. We were also wanting to track the support cases that we are getting, so to try to see if whenever we do a release, does it create much more support cases or not, to understand what is the impact of the, the new releases and how easy are they to be used by the end users. And we also look into the software usage to try to see how many times this, the software or product was started every day to understand how much our customers were engaging typically with the software, not going into detail on how they actually are using the software in those cases. Just to have an overall picture of how the product is working, how the product is working when you want to uh, create new cells, uh, how the product is being adopted by the users and they, how happy are they using the software. So does it create new support cases or not? Or is it actually try, uh, getting more traction from the user's point of view? In the next step, what we did was diving more into the software analytics or the product analytics. How are the users engaging with the product that we are providing? So to understand uh, what features are important for them and what features might not be that important for them. So what we did is define certain features within the product that we thought that are the ones that bring value to the customers and then try to identify these customers from our CRM, where are they located, which country and also to which industries do they belong. So once you have this, then you start having a matrix of data where you can actually start building the personas. So somebody that works in a certain industry in a certain country is not going to work in the same way necessarily as, the, as somebody that works for the same industry but in a different country. Then you can start building these personas on how typically the users are using your products in different areas or against different criteria. Of course, you, will have, uh, you should have a rough idea of what is the expected usage of your product. So what are the key benefits for your users? And uh, when you build these profiles, you should see that does this profile that I build, based on the data that we get, match the information that I get from my end users that they are telling me that they use this, the product in a certain way or another. This was the beginning of my journey into data and to, to understand what are the sources of data in the company and how can we use them. So at this point, what we wanted to try to achieve was try to have a very high level understanding of how the users are using the product. Then we wanted to see how this, uh, the behavior of the users changes from industry to industry, but also from country to country. So in a way, just starting to create these customer personas. And we also try to see from the sales point of view that what is the revenue that these different industries or that the different countries are generating for the company. So how can we take that information into account and uh, to understand that if we want to make a bigger impact on the business, which ones are the areas that it would make more sense to invest our efforts in. So this doesn't mean that it's the areas where your business is the biggest at this point. It might be that you want to address businesses that you should be bigger, but where you are not that big at this point. So basically what we wanted to use at this point, the data was to help us prioritize, to help us understand what is the value of potential ideas and uh, in a very rough way, trying to see how we can prioritize those new ideas and put them into our roadmap to our future versions of the product. In the next one, I will talk more about what was the continuation of this uh, data journey that I started a while ago. So what about you? Do you use data and uh, are you uh, data informed or data driven in your decisions? Do you try to take advantage of all the uh, data sources that you have available within your company? And do you have a holistic view of what's going on within the company? Please comment below and let us know. As always, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one. Stay safe.